Hello friends, this is Uds, uh, according to a Republican senator, and today we're going to be reviewing some of Dead by Daylight's biggest mat lads in history. These are extraordinary players who were just minding their own business when they were challenged or provoked, and instead of shying away from this or ignoring it like many of us would, they actually went out of their way to absolutely humiliate the other side and do so in the most stylish and satisfying way possible. And these are some of the ones that I've seen personally or I've witnessed or made aware of in some way, but I'm sure there's many other mad lads and mad lasses out there that I am just not aware of. So if you like this video and you have suggestions for a part two, I would love to hear them down below. But without further ado, let's jump into number five. So our first mat lad is Jordi Rex. Jordi Rex is a Spanish streamer. He is a very good survivor, but mostly plays Huntress. And he is an absolute devil at playing her. One of the best Huntresses out there. Plays in public matches and stumps everyone. Plays in competitive matches and also performs extremely, extremely well. Uh, needless to say, he is extremely good. But one day, he just happened to piss off a particular survivor who was just not having a great day. He insulted... Uh, Jordi, he called him all sorts of trash, and he demanded that Jordi engage in a 1v1 with him so that he could so that he could make him look bad. Uh, and Jordi, thank goodness, agreed to this 1v1. First, he played Survivor against this person's Huntress, and knowing Huntress really, really well, Jordi was not easy at all to catch. Uh, despite taking this hit very early, he actually managed to run this guy for minutes and minutes and minutes, and after running him for five minutes straight, the guy decided to quit. But not happy with this, not having learned his lesson, he insisted that he now wanted to play Survivor against Jordis uh, Hunters and see how much he would last. And then this happened. Nice one. And nice one. Mm. What happened there? Our next mat lads are actually Scott John and Zubat Lel, who share the fourth spot in this list for a game that they played almost two years ago in the Temple of Purgation against a yet to be reworked Hillbilly. Now, Scott and Zubat are both big time meme lords that were just chilling, doing their silly antics in this game. It was a pretty average uh, run of the mill game where the killer struggled to get many hooks early on. It is a difficult map after all, the Temple of Purgation. Um, notably, the killer did spend a lot of time trying to catch Zubat. And as someone who has tried to catch Zubat in a chase, I can tell you that is a horrible mistake. He's very, very hard to catch. He's a really good survivor. So, if the killer had any chances to reel the game back into control, uh, by this point, he probably had lost all of them. However, surprise, surprise, the killer ended up having no it. And near the end of the game, where all generators were completed, one of the survivors went down, Zubat approached and tried to help, and he also went down. But, what the killer, who was trying to slug everyone, didn't know, is that both Scott and Zubat were both running anti-slugging builds, with Unbreakable, which allows you to pick yourself up, Tenacity, which lets you crawl faster, and Recover at the same time, and Flip Flop, which would also allow you to escape the grabs of the killer faster, if you can recover. So Zubat used his Unbreakable and tried to help the team a little bit, but it didn't work out at all. The fourth survivor who was not present opened the gate across the entire map and then tried to come and help, but they also went down. And eventually all the survivors were down and it looked like the killer was very pleased with himself and he was fully intending to let everybody bleed out on the ground which takes over four minutes to, to happen and it's very very unpleasant. Scott also used his Unbreakable and tried to make a bit of a comeback but because the killer was so close it was very quickly shut down and everybody was on the ground probably destined to bleed out or die to the entity. What the killer didn't take into account however was the fact that these people with tenacity were actually kind of speedy. And they all started to crawl towards the exit gate across the entire map. 
and the agonizing timer drew closer and closer as they were approaching the gate. Now, seeing this, the killer absolutely started to panic and made some questionable decisions. Seeing that all of the survivors were getting close to the exit gate, he started to pluck them from the ground and bring them further and further, and he almost got away with it. But because Flip Flop was in play, eventually Zuba managed to escape his grasp and get out as the other two survivors also crawled out of the gate. And the fourth survivor, who did not have tenacity and would have not made it out of the gates, just so happened to be on top of the hatch, which opened at the last possible second, allowing for a four-man escape. And Thunder just struck outside my house. <laughs> and yeah, this was honestly one of the best moments I've ever witnessed. Props to the killer, he was a great sport, we have to give him that. Moving on to our number three Matt Lad, we have to go back to 2020 when Hexy hosted his best of the best, the largest at the time DVD tournament ever, with a prize fund of $15,000. There were many teams, uh, my, my team included, competing in that tournament to grab a ch chunk of that massive prize money. And two of these teams uh, at the elimination phase were Team Pulse and Team Instant Dodge. Whichever team won would knock out the other team forever, so obviously there was a lot of pressure on both sides to perform really, really well. And in their very first match, the survivors of Team Pulse actually performed incredibly well. A combination of their very, very strong individual skill and their very, very impressive teamwork made it very difficult for Team Instant Dodge's spirit to actually uh, get a hold of them early. However, by the end of the game, the Spirit actually did have a chance to perform quite well and maybe turn things around. Um, J the player Jake, which is our actual Matlat, White Goat, was the one, per uh, the one person who was dead on hook. And if this person died, it was entirely possible that maybe one or two other players could also fall, which would give a massive advantage to Instant Dodge. So it was at this moment when the Spirit absolutely needed to tunnel and eliminate this Jake from this match. After eating a very unfortunate decisive strike, followed by an incredibly well-timed uh, firecracker blind, the spirit still managed to catch Jake just as the final generator was about to be done. But a combination of very, very many things would happen. And since this clip has a commentary from the tournament itself, I'm just gonna let it play out and let you watch it. Two for the prize of one, and it's gonna be a single kill. A very track disco in the end of this game, it seems. Unless Inspire gets interrupted? No way he gets interrupted. Generator done. He's going in for the Sabo place. He's blocking the hook, isn't it enough? It's enough play through to the full of adrenaline. Pulse have absolutely Blinded! Very track Disco in this scenario. Now, White Goat running for his life as the exit gates must be being opened. The pallet will be dropped onto the spirit's head, but no stun will harm him. And it's at this point when we need to take a little break, pause, and just try to get into the mind of our mad lad. It's White Goat from Team Pulse. Now, he just managed to be rescued by a adrenaline fueled survivor teammate who took a hit at the hook that allowed him to escape, also triggering his own adrenaline. He then made distance and made it to the main building on this map and he's just about to reach a pallet. Now, any sane player, what they would do, knowing that the spirit can be very fast, would be to immediately drop the pallet, make sure that they are safe and do not in any way compromise their safety and their chances to get a full four-man escape. But that's not what White Goat did. He instead decided to moonwalk and drop the pallet. Going for the stun, he'll moonwalk. He's feeling pretty confident. And why or how he did that, I still do not fully understand. But yeah, they all got the four-man out and they made it on to the next stage. Wow. Next up is our number two mad lad, Wima TV, a Dead by Daylight streamer who plays mostly killer, but who's also a very good survivor. Uh, for some reason, one day he just decided that he would smash the previous records of escapes in a row. 
Now, Noob3 had gotten 50 escapes in a row, I'm sure you're familiar. Aaron had also achieved a really mind-numbing record of 96 escapes in a row. And I believe a Russian player named Hellhound also had a record upwards of 130 escapes in a row. If you ask me, very impressive. If you ask Wima, not so impressive at all because he actually went on to win and escape from 300 plus matches in a row. Uh, obviously, to do so, he spared no resources. He played with some of the best players he could find. He They used the, some of the best offerings and items they could get their hands on. But still, 300 skips in a row was, especially at the time, incredibly, incredibly impressive. And it was quite the feat. Uh, eventually, the streak ended because a stream sniper managed to infiltrate the streak. Uh, they used the Mori when when the Moris were actually really, really powerful, and that allowed them to target and kill Wima and obviously end the streak. The hype was palpable, but that was the end of the run. Still, some people did not really uh, agree that this was impressive. They pointed out the fact that the keys are just too strong and that it really made no sense because his teammates could all die and he also, you know, could just hide and, and wait for the hypes to spawn and it was very, very cheap. And some people just didn't see uh, the merit in this really, really crazy world record. So Wima just went and did it again without keys. And he actually beat his own record and got to 500 escapes in a row, which is just mind numbing and a big F you to any haters out there. And the thing is, when I asked him what made him lose the streak, he told me that he never lost it. When they got to 500 wins in a row, he and his friends were so sick of doing generators, they just stopped. So technically, he is still on an ongoing escape streak uh, that is over 500 escapes in a row, which is just maybe the most crazy thing <laughs> you'll see uh, on the Survivor side today. Uh, but we have one more Mad Lad. Let's see what he did. Before we get into the top mat lad of today's video, a honorable mention goes to Leonek, who's a Spanish DVD streamer. He uploaded a video talking about his opinions about gen rushing, basically explaining that he doesn't think that gen rushing exists, really. Most of the people that complain about gen rushing, in his view, don't know how to pressure gens very well, and he thinks it's all blown out of proportion. Of course, this is a completely illegal and unacceptable opinion, so a comment was quickly posted on his video calling him out. Uh, this comment is in Spanish, but I will I will roughly translate. It says something along the lines of like, Leonek, if you say the gen Russian doesn't exist, then I recommend you play Trapper with barbecue and chili, enduring, brutal strength, and Shadowborn or Monitor abuse, with the add-ons of Trapper back, Yellow Trapper back, and the quicker uh, yellow trapping speed. Then you check if that will not get you gen rushed. And of course, what Leo did, uh, what I would have done is probably just post a very long reply to this comment, explaining my arguments, posting all kinds of uh, arguments. But what Leon Ed just did, he just booted up his game, played a one match of Trapper with exactly those perks and killed everyone at three gens remaining, which I just think is the, is the funniest thing ever. <laughs> and I wish we had a video of that match. But yeah, Warren's at, a, at least an honorable mention in this list. Finally, reaching our number one spot, the biggest mat lad uh, of them all. We have to first talk about hatch standoffs. If you've only played Dead by Daylight recently, you might not be aware that the feature to close the hatch was not always present in the game. Back in 2017, when this incident occurred, uh, such a feature did not exist, and the way it worked was relatively simple. If a survivor and the killer made it to the hatch at the exact same time, we would have what's called a hatch standoff, where whoever made the first move would lose. If the survivor jumped into the hatch, the killer could actually grab them, and thus the killer would win. But if the killer hit the survivor, the survivor would use that animation cooldown to go into the hatch, so whichever side did something first, the other side would win. And obviously, this could go on indefinitely because the endgame collapse was not a feature back then. In the example that you're seeing right now, uh, we have a hatch, uh, hatch standoff that lasted 44 minutes. 
Although I've heard from other instances where standoffs went on for three or five hours, where both sides were just hell-bent on winning, and neither side would budge. And obviously, this was pretty crazy. But not quite as crazy as the conclusion to the Hatch standoff that I'm going to show you today that was pulled off by our biggest mat lad, Marth88. Now, Marth88 had been waiting an eternity on a Hatch standoff, and he was also convinced that the person uh, that he was playing against was actually watching his stream and stream sniping him. So he was just ready to take a little break uh, after being on the Hatch standoff for a very long time. And I will just show you what happened. No, nope, Flash, theoretically, there's nothing I can do at this point. I'm just wasting her time while I eat. Oh, bottles, I know. All right, guys, I'll be back in a few. What, bitch? I got a controller for your ass. Oh, oh, feels bad, don't it, bitch? Oh, oh, get wrecked. Oh, oh, get wrecked, stream sniper. And that was all for today. If you have ideas or, or experiences or clips or stories that you think would fit in a second part of a video of this of this type, please do let me know because I do enjoy things like this uh, quite a bit. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.